everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Crafts. I'm coming by today to share with you um, how I add beads, closures, chain, etc. to my pendants. This was a, a requested video. So I'm going to start out by telling you some of the supplies you're going to need. Um, these are some larger jump rings that I ordered. I've got them in 10 and 14 millimeter size. Alright, I'll try to remember to share the links down below the video. These are different size jump rings, I believe starting from maybe 3 millimeter. It's either 3 millimeter or 4 millimeter, up to, I believe, 8 millimeter. Alright. I've got these in all colors. <laughs> then I've got some chain. This is a cable link cable chain. And then I've got some head pins. You can get head pins and eye pins. Eye pins have a loop already on one end. Head pins are just straight with a head on the other end. So, I'm going to start out with just a head pin. Even though I'm going to put a loop on both ends. But, I'm starting out with a head pin just because they're shorter. And, as you can see, I have very few of the eye pins left in the silver. So, I need to order some. Alright, <laughs> as per typical, the one I pulled out is the bent one. So, just straighten this out a bit first. They're normally pretty uh, flexible. Alright. Then you're going to need two sets of jewelry pliers. I've got a round nosed set and a flat nosed set just because it's what I have. I actually have two sets of round nose, but these are the ones I always grab. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is cut off the head of this head pin. I just grip it up close to the head with the cutter part of this pliers and clip it off. Alright, then I'm going to take the round nose and I'm going to grip the pin right at the very tip edge close to the end of the pliers. Then I'm going to I'm going to bend it. Then I'm going to grip it in the bend and bend it some more. I'm going to do that until I have a closed loop. Alright, then I'm going to grab the closed loop. I'm going to grab it close to where the straight part comes out. And I'm going to bend it back. So now I've got a loop at the end. Alright. Alright, next thing you're going to do is decide, well, you may have wanted to do this first, decide what your arrangement's going to be. So I'm going to have a bead coming out of the top and then the chain with beads on the chain, if that makes sense. So I'm going to start with the bead that's going to go on the top. Because this has some greens in with the silver leaf. I'm going to choose some greens to go with the silver leaf beads. Alright, and I'll try to remember to put a link down below where I got these from. No, I can't share any tips on the easy way to open these bags. 
they can be difficult. You can um, twist them to get them open if you can't pull them apart. All right, so I'm going to need four of these. And then four of these little seed beads. These are really helpful to keep, well, to keep the head pin from going back up, up into your bead if you're not using it as an eye pin. Because the head pins sometimes are slightly smaller than the hole in the bead. Alright, so I'm going to thread a seed bead on. Then I'm going to thread a glass bead on. Alright, just like that. All right, sorry about that again. Just when you think you're prepared, you're really probably not. I'm going to use some bead caps. Alright, so now I need a bead cap. As you can see, I've put it on what seems to be upside down. But when I add the polymer clay bead, you can see that's really the way I wanted it. So now I add another bead cap. Another glass bead. And another seed bead. Alright. Now, you can decide this is too much, or you can leave it like it is. I've decided it's a bit too much. So, I'm going to pull it all back off and just go with the bead caps. The seed bead at the bottom, the bead cap, and then my polymer clay bead. Alright. Alright, then grip the head pin with a bit of a gap between the pliers and the top seed bead. Trust me, you'll bust the seed bead if you don't. Then bend it back just at about, I don't know what that is, but a bit of an angle. Alright, then I put my finger between the seed bead and the end of the head pin. Flip the pliers around and clip it off. Alright, now that should be enough to roll the other end of the head, beat, uh, head pin. Alright, it's as simple as that. Now I've gotten out one of these 10 millimeter jump rings. I'm going to grip it with one side of the pliers on one side with the pliers and I'm going to grip the other side with the other pliers. Then I'm going to my left hand twist it away from me and with the right hand twist it towards me. Alright. You do it this way so that when you close the jump ring the edges of the jump ring are still aligned. Alright. I'll show you what I mean. Now I'm going to do the opposite maneuver. I'm going to push the right hand away from me. Pull the left hand towards me. Alright. As you can see, they were still aligned so it closed right up. Didn't leave any gap. Alright. So... I'll get 
one of these four millimeter I believe it is jump rings and do the same thing Now, you may need to put your glasses on to do this part, but... Alright, and you can always fill the gap with your fingernail or your finger and make sure it closed properly. Alright, so there it is so far. Alright, now I've got one of these maybe 7mm jump rings. It actually may be a little large. Alright. You just want the jump ring large enough for the chain to go through. Alright, after you find the end of the chain, which can be a trick, I'm going to clip off maybe two inches, two and a half inches. Alright, then I'm going to clip off double about nine inches. just depending on how long you want the necklace to be. I usually run my pendants about 21 inches. Including the closure. But they will vary a bit. Alright. Before I go any further, I'm going to repeat the beads, but this time I'm going to actually add the glass beads. And I'll just show it to you one more time. And then I'll do the other one off camera. Clip off the end of the head pin. Roll the eye on the end of the head pin. Bend the head, the eye back. Because you want this post of the head pin to be in line with the eye. You want it to be more of a six, or more, of, I'm sorry. You want it to be in line and less of a six, less of a P. All right, so here we go with the 
seed bead, glass bead, bead gap, bead, bead cap, glass bead, seed bead. Now you can buy head pins in different lengths. These are, I believe the two inch head pins. You can buy them also in three inch. I'll do two of these and then I'll be back. Right. I wanted to share with you a problem that does arise sometimes. You'll get a bead cap where the center hole is still filled in. So I'm just going to take my craft knife and it will punch right through usually. It's generally just the coating that they put on these bead caps, the silver coating that fills the hole in. So as you can see, I just opened that hole right back up. So it's back to being a useful bead cap. All right, so going with some of these four millimeter jump rings. I'm going to put the jump ring through the chain. I'm just dangling a couple of links, maybe three links. From my fingers and then it will slip right through there usually sometimes it can be more difficult then I'm gonna hang the first bead section then close the jump ring all right then I'm gonna feed that bit of chain through the jump ring that we created for the chain which also can be easier said than done. All right. Then I'm going to get another jump ring. Feed the chain through. And add the, the next bead section to the other end of the little chain. Alright. So now you can see what we've got. Got the bead dangle bit before the pendant. Then we've got the bit of chain and the two sections of beads. Now I'm going to add the other two sections of chain and I'll come back and show you how to put the closures on. Alright, now you can see we've got a full chain put on the pendant. Now we just need to put the closures on. I'm going to show you my box of closures <laughs> because you can choose a toggle style closure or one of these hook and loop style closures. So that's what I'm going to choose this time. Alright. So again we'll need two jump rings.
find the end of the chain. And I'm going to put the hoop, the loop on, and close the jump ring. Again, feeling with my fingernail to make sure that the jump ring is closed. My fingernail will not fit in between the gap. So, you know that it's tight enough that the chain nor the jump ring will come loose. One thing I didn't say is I always try to position the jump ring with the gap facing away from me. It's just easier for me that way. Alright. Alright, then the hoop of uh, the hook. Again, feeling for that gap. My fingernail won't go in, so it's closed properly. And there we have it. A pendant with a closure. Now some of these closures are a little tight, so what I'm going to do is grip the closure with my pliers and just pull away from me slightly. And there it is. You've got a completed pendant with beads on the chain closures and the pendant dangle. So there you are, how to complete a pendant. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.